Hey there everyone, I'm Caitlin, your geeky girlfriend, and I've got another movie review. This one I'm really excited about um, to talk with you guys about this movie. Before we get into it, if you are not already a follower of my Instagram page, it's at your underscore geeky gf. Make sure you go follow me and give me some likes over there and some comments if you like what you see. I've got um, typed up movie reviews. We've got tons of fashion reviews. Um, I've got lots of discount codes for awesome shops and boutiques. So make sure you go check that out. Or if you know somebody who might like that, give this video a share um, and have them follow me and go check out my content over there. And make sure that you subscribe to this channel. We've got movie reviews, book reviews, and a lot more um, of those things coming in the next um, several weeks and months. So great content coming at you guys. So make sure that you keep um, giving me likes and love and support. And I will be checking those comments for more movie review um, or more movie recommendations. So make sure that you go and drop those of what you want me to watch. For today, this movie was 100% my choice and I was really excited about it. Today, I'm going to be talking about Sex and the City, the movie part one. Now, before we get into the review of this plot and the movie, um, it is important to note that this movie picks up exactly where this um, beloved HBO series um, ends. So I did finish the series and um, we've got some exciting things coming to the channel, including a new TV show talk um, series coming to the channel. So I'm going to be talking about what I loved and didn't love about this series um, coming hopefully very soon. I'm waiting on some collab stuff to come through. So that's an exciting piece of news that I want to share with all of you. So I did finish watching the Sex and the City, this series um, via HBO Max and I loved the series. You'll have to check out my thoughts about it in my um, TV talk show series. But um, today we're going to be talking about the first installment of the Sex and the City movie. As I said, the movie picks up exactly where the series leaves off with all of the storylines. Um, kind of, you know, it does take place a few years down the road. Um, I believe like three or four years later after like I said, after the series ends. So the majority of the spoilers that I mentioned in that slide a couple of slides ago are going to be right here with the culmination of the series. So if you have not watched Sex in the City, um, the series, you might want to stop watching this video and go check out that series because I am going to give some spoilers um, with regards to the end of this series. So we'll start with Miranda at the end of the series. Her and Steve live happily ever after in Brooklyn with their son, Brady, and Magda, their um, housekeeper. And that story picks up exactly where it leaves off. Miranda and Steve are, um, they've been married now for like five years. Miranda's still working full time and um, she's just, they're in kind of a slump with regards to their marriage. Like, um, Steve is trying to keep the spark alive and Miranda just doesn't have the energy between being a mom and working full time and feeling guilty about not being there for Brady as much as she wants to be. So that's kind of Miranda's, um, little struggle there. And, um, she is my favorite character in the series. I love her and Steve and I was really happy with where the series ended with her. Then we go, I'm going to leave Carrie for last because the movie revolves around Carrie. So we'll jump to Samantha next. Um, and at the end of the series, um, Samantha was in recovery from chemotherapy and was healthy. And in the movie, we see her back to her normal self. She's um, back to, she's still with Smith and they are very happy. Um, and then Charlotte, at the very end of the series, we hear that she is going to be getting a um, she's going to finally be getting her baby that she wants. Her and Harry are going to be the adoptive parents of a young girl from China. And that is exactly where the movie, like I keep saying, it picks up exactly where that leaves off. We see Charlotte and Harry, her husband, um, with their daughter whom they've named Lily. And the whole beginning of the movie kind of shows you how everyone is doing. And an interesting twist about the movie was it actually shows how they all met, which is a, a nice addition that we didn't get in the series. So I liked the beginning. Now let's talk about Carrie. 
obviously you see Mr. Big on the screen and the majority of the movie revolves around Carrie and Big as as does the majority of the series. Spoiler alert, um, in the film, Carrie and Big decide that it's time to take the next in the series, the the series ends with Carrie and Big reuniting and being together. Um, so now we jump forward four or five years. They've been dating and they're happy and they're stable. But now they decide to take the next step. They're going to move in together into this super nice penthouse apartment and they're going to get married. And it takes, you know, Carrie says she wants this really mundane, low, um, you know, low pomp and circumstance wedding. And then she changes her mind and gets this big avant garde avant-garde dress and you know once the bridesmaids and once the big white wedding in the library and all this stuff well big being big he decides to leave he doesn't show up and um again spoilers this is like the most spoilers that I've ever released from a movie but it it all um it all makes sense in the end so um the majority of the movie is Carrie coming to the realization or trying to figure out if she wants to give him a 50th chance. Um, and the girls go to Mexico on her honeymoon and they just have like a nice girl's trip out of it and you get some laughs and, um, then Carrie comes back and she has to move back into her apartment. And so the whole movie is essentially centered around her deciding whether or not she does love big does she not love big essentially the same turmoil that we watched in the series so i love the series continuity in this movie i love how it does pick up exactly where the series leaves off i really like charlotte's story in this movie it is everything that she has ever wanted and it's everything that we've wanted for her um as a viewer of the series and of the movie, the ending of this movie is solid and it's where they should have stopped. They should not have made a sequel. There's a separate review about that. You can go check that one out here on the channel, but this movie has a solid ending alone from the ending of the series. The series alone ended in a perfectly good bow with everybody's ending sort of tied up. And then they did the movie and this first movie ends at a good spot with everybody. And this is where they should have stopped. But overall, the highlight of this movie for me was Charlotte and Harry's storyline because they finally get everything that they've ever wanted. And that's what, you know, Charlotte has worked so hard to get that far and they finally get it. And so um, that's, the, that's the big highlight um, of the movie for me is Charlotte's storyline. The cons. Uh, Mr. Big. Anytime Mr. Big is on screen, there is a problem. That's how it is throughout the series. That's how it is in this movie. So wh why they thought that Carrie and Big were a good idea and why they thought this movie should happen in the first place and have Mr. Big and Carrie get married is beyond me. I'm not a writer. I didn't direct this film. But anybody who's watched the series up to this point knew that Big was not going to show up for that wedding. So it was kind of like why? Why do we have this storyline? Why are we doing this? Um, the movie was not necessary to the series. The series would have been fine ending where it did. We got enough closure. The fans were all happy with everybody's storylines. Every character in the show was happy. There was no reason to even make a movie. So it was kind of unnecessary as a whole. And I love Miranda and Steve. And in the movie, although they start off you know, the movie starts off and kind of shows that they're having some turmoil. The movie, you know, you find out that Steve has cheated on Miranda. And so they almost get a divorce and almost break up. And the whole ending to her storyline that we were happy about with the series sort of starts to unravel. And it was just stressful watching this movie because you just want it like you've waited. We waited three or four seasons for them to get back together after she had Brady and, you know, it was just hard to watch them again go through a turmoil. Now, I understand that's real life. They were trying to make it very realistic. And, you know, the idea that people have this, you know, passion, intimacy all the way through marriage is not is not realistic. It's, a, you know, some would say mythical um, that, you know, your intimacy doesn't change as you get further along into your marriage and as your kids get older and as things different, you know, your mother is sick and blah, 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 blah. That's 
you know, it's understandable that they wanted to make it realistic. But again, if you're going to do a movie, then like, it, there was already enough drama in the film between Carrie and Mr. Big, like just, they should have just let that be the main storyline and not mess with anybody else's happy endings. They also kind of uproot Sam's happy ending and give her a different ending as well. Um, and so they, they just kind of tore apart everything that they had ended so nicely in the series. Overall, I would give the Sex and the City movie part one a B. It was a good, I enjoyed the movie, and despite all the cons and despite all the drama and the wraparound and the turmoil, they did end it very nicely. And it, again, it ended in a good spot, and that's where they should have stopped. There should not have been a second movie. Um, but they did, and we talk about that. I talk about that in another video. So if you're interested in how I feel about the second Sex in the City movie, go and watch my Sex in the City, the movie part two movie review. Um, but overall, this one, I it was good. Like I didn't want to admit that it would be good because I wanted the series to like stand alone as oh, this is so good. And that's how it is. The series is great. It's funny. It's real life. It's um, dramatic. It's all the things that you want out of a TV series. And I was kind of thrown off by the fact that there was a film, but this one all in all was not bad. Would I watch it again? Probably. Um, I would most definitely watch this one again. So if you have seen Sex and the City, the series, and you want to know how the story plays on, then definitely give this, the Sex and the City, the movie part one, a watch because it is, um, it does end up being a pretty good movie um, despite everything. And everybody does end up with a happy ending. Again, a spoiler alert slightly, but um, definitely go give it a watch if you're a fan of the series. Um, for more of my movies, um, my movie reviews, um, make sure that you subscribe and drop in the comments what you felt about this movie. Did you like it? Who's your favorite character in Sex and the City? And were you happy with how their story ended up in the series overall? And let me know what movies you want me to watch in the comments. I'm always looking for new movies to watch. And I will definitely take your recommendations and watch them and then come back here and review them in this channel series. So make sure you do all those things. And that's all for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.